Hey, what's up everyone? Derek from Nerd or Die here, and I wanna show you how to set up the new widget that we just dropped for the maker. You can use this to remind people about September, Twitch Prime, whatever you have going on at your Kickstream or YouTube. You can use this really for anything we have you covered with this new free widget. By the way, make sure not to leave this video because I'm walking you through everything you need to know about this widget. You'll be able to take full advantages of changing all the colors, images, all the little tips and tricks of design that you need to know to make a great looking widget. So the first step is to check out the link in the description below. And then from there, once you're logged into your nerdordie.com account, all that you need to do is actually download it and you can use it as is. So I'm gonna click the download button and then I'm gonna go up here and open it up. And then I'm gonna extract it very quickly here. And when you're extracting it, make sure it's somewhere on your computer that you're not gonna move it so that it doesn't get messed up inside of OBS. And then from there, all you have to do is just grab this HTML file and toss it into OBS and then position it where you want it. That's really it. If you don't have the ability to drag it into OBS, you can just add in a new browser source and then target this HTML file and it'll work just the same. All right, so that's the basic of setting it up. Like I said, it's very easy, but a lot of you out there probably don't care too much about September or you want something else for your Kickstream or YouTube. I'm gonna show you how to make it into a customized widget and change everything about it right now. Let's get started with the main options here over on the left. And just a quick side note here, if you ever kind of feel lost or you just wanna restart, just hit this reset button and it'll reset all the default values for the options that we're gonna be changing. But the first option here in the main options is the pause time. And this is in seconds. And basically that's how long it's just gonna sit on the screen and wait before it animates out. And then once it's done animating out, you have the loop time here in minutes. And this is gonna be how long before it actually replays. So if you wanna up this to like 30 minutes or so, just drag up the slider and grab that new value for it. And then when you put it in OBS, it'll wait 30 minutes before replaying each time. Now in the maker itself, it's gonna replay right away. That's just a feature that we added in so that you can see it animating over and over and more easily design it. So don't think what you're seeing on the screen actually represents the uh, loop time. Then we have the widget height, which is pretty straightforward. If you want it to be taller, you can just adjust it here and make it a lot bigger. Something I do want to mention is while this might seem a bit silly, if you're streaming at a very high resolution, you're probably going to want to bump up all the values here so you get a higher resolution version of this to use for your stream. It's a lot better to do that here in the maker than in OBS because when you have a bigger source file to work with, it's going to show up a lot crispier in your stream rather than just kind of dragging it up in OBS and scaling it all out. So anyways, I'm going to just drop this down here a little bit. And now we have the right side media. This is, of course, the crown that we have here right now, but you can change out any video, any image, any GIF. So I think Nathan over at Nerd or Die here would hate me if I didn't include Kirby. So I'll toss him in and kind of show you what he was playing around with originally. And then we have the media with slider that if you want to make Kirby bigger, you can just drag that up and just look at him go, uh, beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> so anyways, that's going to drive my eyeballs nuts. I'm going to reset that here and get started with the color options. While the color options are fairly straightforward, I kind of want to set a goal of making a widget for kick so that we have something to kind of work towards so I can show you how adaptable this really is and how easy it is to change things up. So before we do the colors, let me just go ahead and toss in the kick logo here. And then I'm going to drop the media width just down a little bit as well. And now we can open up the colors. And the first thing I'm going to do is make it kind of a dark mode widget. So I'm going to use our preset colors here to grab one of the darker colors. And then for the divider, which is this line right here, I'm going to just drop in this slightly lighter color as well. And that just looks kind of right to me. Now, the nice thing about the maker is it has this little timeline down here that you can go ahead and scrub through and really see what's exactly happening. Now, we see the trail colors right here, one, two, three, and four. So let's just make those kind of a green to make this fit the theme a little bit more. And once that's done, we can see that already it's evolving into a different look and feel. You know, if you want to use your brand colors, of course you can. And any of the colors in here, you can choose a hex code or you can use this slider right here to actually change the opacity as well. Or just go crazy and try to find the perfect color right out of this little picker if you so desire. 
Now that we have things kind of moving with the colors, let's actually change up the text options very quickly. I'm gonna change the top and bottom text colors just real fast. So I'm gonna scroll down here and choose a green because I don't know, I just, I can't look at that too long with the dark on dark text. It just looks wrong to me. So excuse me for skipping ahead a little bit. But anyways, the next text option that we have to cover is the top text area maximum width. So when you have this kind of wide text here, you can actually set a maximum width of it to push it down with if you so desire. Otherwise, it will take up as much space as it possibly can. So we actually utilize that here for the bottom text area where it kind of squishes it in and puts it on two lines rather than having one long line. However, if that's something that you want, you can increase the text area here to really whatever you want. So I'm gonna put in check me out on kick and then I'm gonna up the font size just really quickly to better demonstrate what I'm talking about. And you'll see here that it will kind of kick down here, no pun intended. So what I can do is just up this width just a bit and then see if it now stays on one line. And then I notice, okay, it's still not on one line. I'm gonna just up it a little bit more. And then the other thing that I'm gonna change very quickly is just bump up the height just a bit as well, just to kind of give it a little more padding between the top and the bottom of the text. So just those little details really make it a lot easier to read and easier to understand for your viewer. So make sure to look out for those. The next option that I want to talk about is the font library that we have here. So you can choose any font family from Google Fonts. You can type in Roboto or Oswald or something like that and find the font that you want to use. I personally really like this font, so I'm going to leave it on. But if you have a system font, you can also type in the name right here and then hit OK and then load in any custom system font that you'd like to use. And then, of course, you can change the font weight. It's going to dynamically load the weights for the Google fonts for you. So if there's different weights that exist, you can choose them from this option. And then, of course, we already changed the font color and the bottom margin here just adds a little bit of space between these. I actually think I'm going to dial it back here just a little bit. I'm a kind of pixel perfect type of guy, so just want to make it look a little bit cleaner. And then in the bottom text option, I noticed that now it looks kind of weird that the bottom one isn't as wide as the top. So I can just dial up this width just a bit and then get the exact look that I'm kind of going for. I kind of like that. Let's leave it as is. And now in the bottom text here, you can see that it says take up to 30% off and the 30% off is actually surrounded in double asterisks. In this maker widget, uh, it will actually make it bold for any text that you surround in double asterisks. So you can see here that the 30% off is a little bit older and Twitch Prime as well is bolder as well. Just to kind of highlight those, uh, I'm going to leave the text as is because I don't think that's too important to cover. But really, you can just type in whatever you want and get moving from there. And then all the other options are the exact same. You can see here all the font weights that you can choose from and all that fun stuff. So the good news is that we're almost done setting this up. And the even better news is, is that the emo animation options are my favorite ones that we've kind of added to this widget. You can change the animation type from explosion, which is this kind of firework effect that you're seeing to particle, which kind of adds these emotes as particles shooting out of the widget. And then you can even just disable it if you don't like it at all. Uh, I don't know why you do that, but you know, to each their own. So I'm going to leave it on explosion for now and then just talk about these other options very quickly. The min image height and max image height is basically that it chooses between a min and max and then sets the emotes to those just to give it some variation. So if you want to have super big emotes, you can up both of these to whatever size you want and then get a more elaborate effect to it. But I'm more of a simple man here, so I'm going to dial it back just a bit. The min and max distance are basically exactly what they say. It's how far they will move on minimum and how far they will move on maximum. Again, just adding some variation to the movement so it's not really static feeling. Then we have the min and max duration, which is a similar effect. Basically, it will be between one and three seconds for how long the animation of the emotes happens and each one of them gets assigned their own unique little value. And then finally, you see some options for the explosion only and particle only. So these two options right here will only work, work with the explosion, whereas these two options here will work with the particle effect. So with this, it's basically the minimum amount of images and the maximum amount of images. This is again to give some variation. So if you want a lot of images shooting out, just bump them both up and you'll see it go a lot crazier. 
And then if we go ahead and enable the particle effect here, you can see right now it's set to up where the emotes are going up. We can set it to down and then we can even change the images per second. So you'll see it just go super crazy. And I guess you can really draw the eye to the widget with this effect if you'd like. Now, the last and final options will just simply be changing out your own emotes. You can see that we have hearts and stars kind of added as default. And if you're like, oh, I hate hearts and stars, well, good news, you can change them out very quickly. So I'm going to delete the ones here. And then for this one, I'm going to just grab a new one. So you can use an image, you can use a GIF like we did before. So let's see which one I didn't use here. And then we can even add uh, this one in and let's add just one more image as well. And you can see you can just go crazy, add as many emotes as you like to this and then play around with the animations till you get something that you like. Personally, I like to keep it a little subtle. Maybe if I put it on a just chatting screen or something like that, you could go crazy. But for gameplay, maybe dial it back a bit. But I don't know. You know, I don't know your stream. And if you want something different, go ahead and give it a try. Now that we're done with all that, you're probably like, OK, I did all this work. How do I save it? The good news is, is that the maker will actually save all of your settings for you automatically so you can come back and work it on anytime later. But if you want to actually save something on your computer and make sure that if we make an update, you're not going to lose it, just click export down here and then you can re import that file back into the maker. The only thing you might need to change is if you change out any images or videos. So just keep that in mind. And then after that, you can just download this once again and then do the same thing we did at the beginning of this video where we're just going to extract it and then add it into OBS Studio. So let me just show you that very quickly. You can see here now the kick themed widget is working as intended and we can drag this over. Of course, if you want to make changes to the delay options, you can do so up here in your main options and really dial it in for whatever you want. All right, everyone, that's all that we have for this video. If you have a second, check out our main shop for nerdodie.com. It's how we get support for being able to make stuff like this. We have a lot of great free and premium overlays over there. And of course, like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions at all, we want to hear your comments because the maker is still in beta. So any of your feedback right now, how are you using it? Any trouble that you ran into? Any suggestions for features you'd like to see? We are listening and we're going to do our best to make as many changes as possible, as quickly as possible. Anyways, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time. Later.